Uh, thank you, Chair Harvey and April. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope you had a good night's sleep so that you can have some good attention to my presentation uh, and had a good breakfast as well so that you won't be thinking about it. Um, I will be focusing on World Animal Protection's approach to dog population management. And I will start by introducing what we actually mean by dog population management and take you through some of our work that we are doing currently across the world. Um, before doing that world animal protection, we, in, in, a, in a short summary, we have four program areas, animals in the wild, animals in farming, animals in communities, and animals in disasters. And we have, uh, we operate through our offices in about 17 countries across the world. Um, so MIREB, 460,000 cases of reported dog bites in 2017. This is not my data. This is the data that I just added up from the presentations yesterday. <coughs> Um, so this essentially could be said that we have exposure of 100 million plus individuals in the region to the risk of rabies and other dog-mediated genetic disease. Um, no bite, no rabies. I took that out again from the presentation of, um, of Leah, who is not here with us today. Um, and it's true. So we... From all the presentations yesterday, and I have been working in this sector for just over four years now, and there one thing that is agreed across, whether it's MIREV region or SARC region or ASEAN region <coughs> or Latin America region, one thing is agreed is if, you, if we want to eliminate rabies, then we have to focus on dogs. So dogs are our allies in the fight against rabies. They are the soldiers in our fight against rabies. And my presentation is going to focus quite heavily on dogs and managing the population of dogs. Um, the picture on the top left is the picture from Nepal. Um, and I come from Nepal, although I'm based in the UK for the last 10 years. In Nepal, dogs are worshipped one day of the year. Dogs are literally worshipped. <laughs> Um, because of various functions they perform um, to us. Before I go into dog population management, I would like to draw your attention to this slide, which, which explains in one slide on the dog population dynamics and why we need to focus on dog population management and this dynamics as a whole rather than parts of it. If I may come... So this section is a source of four dogs. It can be purchased gifts, or just purchased for the breeders, or just purchased in the pet shops, markets, or adopted from the shelters. So all of these dogs are what we call owned confined. Um, sorry. Um, so all of these are the sources of the owned dogs. And all of these sources is what we know as owned dogs. So owned dogs are owned confined, owned roaming. They have com we have community owned dogs and unowned dogs. So all of these, so these are, these are the one what we are more focused on at the moment, the owned confined dogs. But there are also all of these categories, which are all in the same street. Whichever country you go in, if you have a dogs in the street, then these are the categories of that dog. And when all of these dogs are here, we assume most of the time that all of these dogs have no owners. All of these dogs are strays, true strays. But when, you know, when, we, when we have dogs in the street and they are owned roaming, they are community owned, unowned. One thing is all of these dogs interact with each other, breed among each other. And, and the process is reversible. So the, the population of dogs from the street, again, 
gets to shelter, pet shops, markets, gets its own. So this is the general dog population dynamics that we find in most of the countries around the world. It's just a It's just a matter of which part we are looking at. In most of the Western countries, we are talking about own confined dog and dog in the shelter. But in majority of the developing countries in the world, we are talking about this whole dynamics. Um, so these are some of the pictures I wanted to show you. These are all pictures from Nepal, taken in the street of Nepal just a week ago. So this is my 10-year-old son playing with the street dog. These are some of the members of the public, again, interacting with the street dogs. These are three street dogs who are waiting outside the meat shop in the hope of food. Um, and this is just a dog enjoying a sun sign. So are these Stray dogs. <laughs> <coughs> so you know, th that's, that's how when we go to developing countries, that's exactly the kind of situation we get. Um, <laughs> and the bond that the dogs form with the community members, whether it's the new community members or the old members who are staying in that community, is almost the same. Everyone, they love dog, and they love interacting with the dog. Um, so dog population management now. I don't want to make it too complex. It's, uh, it's when we say dog population management, it's, uh, a, it could be quite complex. So these are some of the components of the dog population management program that, um, uh, that we at the World Animal <coughs> Protection also promote, but also there's something called International Companion Animal Management Coalition which is a coalition of the organizations working in uh, animal welfare sector and particularly on dog, uh, on companion animals. Uh, so we have International Fund for Animal Welfare, we have HSI, we have um, Global Alliance for Rabies Control as part of that network. Um, and all of uh, the, ne the network, I should say, did quite extensive research some years ago and then came up with a dog population management uh, and elements, proposed the elements for good dog population management. It starts from, um, it has elements like education, primary health care, reproduction control, vaccination and parasite control, identification and registration system, legislation, holding facilities and rehoming center, controlling access to resources, euthanasia as a last resort, um, but is it possible in the context that we are talking about to implement all of this within a month or even within a year or even within a two year? So that's where the complexity comes in. And when we say dog population management and where we saw this slide, most of the countries think we, we are not going to be able to do this. This is just too many elements uh, that our resources can't handle. Um, and we just are simply not able to do all of this. Um, but this is not something that we need to do all together. This is a progressive process that we want to reach at the end of the process. And this is going to take a long time. But what are the primary focus among all of those elements that we need to focus on, not only from the rabies perspective, but from managing the population perspective. So I saw the, uh, the dog population dynamics earlier. So in order to address that, we need to have responsible pet, focus on res promoting responsible pet ownership. We need to focus on primary health care, which is essentially um, reproduction control, vaccination and, par um, and parasite control, and education. And these three teams Came out, came out quite clearly from all of the yesterday's presentation as well. So when World Animal Protection says dog population management for foreseeable future in lots of given context, these are the three things that we focus on. 
Uh, wall animal protection, as I said earlier, we have four program areas and the program on dogs falls under animals in communities. And this is the program area that I lead um, for wall animal protection globally. And the focus is on improving welfare and of dogs and communities globally. And rabies elimination for true dog population management to improve the welfare of dogs and communities. So that is going to be our focus at least until, until the end of 2020. Now I'll take you through some of the projects and programs that we are running uh, across the world. Uh, I won't go through all of the projects, but some highlighted ones. So in Brazil, um, we are working on dog bite prevention and, dog pop and establishing dog population management courses. So the project is five key messages to prevent dog bites. The resource that you are seeing here we produced that in collaboration with World Health Organization, Pan American Health Organization, and Global Alliance for Rabies Control. Um, so this is the project that initiative that started in 2014, partnership with Global Alliance for Rabies Control, PAHO, and WHO. The objective was to educate the most vulnerable population to recognize the signs and situations that can lead to dog biting and teach how to prevent them. The reason no bite, no rabies. Um, the impact that we expect is the incidence of decreased incidence of canine bites, decreased risk of transmission of rabies. Indirect imp impact is promotion of responsible pet ownership, vac increased vaccination, and improved dog population management. And the target public was children and adolescents, 4 to 12 years. These are some of the assets that we use to promote these resources. So it's called, it's uh, five keys to uh, dog bite prevention and we have the whole kit in English, Portuguese and Chinese language so far. And this is open source, we provide it to anyone who wishes to translate in their respective uh, language. And we have a guidelines for teachers, we do training for trainers for teachers as well on this, uh, in addition to uh, targeting students. There are some of the posters and illustrations that teachers or anyone teaching these five keys to dog bite prevention can use. Um, and we also developed the small video. <coughs> Let's see if I can play. This is in Portuguese language. Cinco chaves para evitar mordidas de cães. Nós, cães, somos grandes amigos dos seres humanos. Mas quando ficamos irritados ou nos assustamos, podemos morder. Aprenda a viver com a gente de forma responsável e segura. Não me incomode nem me assuste. Especialmente quando estou comendo ou preso na coleira ou atrás do portão. This uh, stop motion was a uh, very big thing across Brazil. Quando estou com meus filhotes ou brinquedos, também não é uma boa ideia. E me deixe quietinho quando estou doente, dormindo ou dentro do carro. Com cuidado e respeito, Nós, cães, podemos ser seus melhores amigos! And as I mentioned earlier, so we have this whole thing, whole uh, resource in English, in Portuguese and in Chinese. And the next bit of our program in Brazil is uh, our partnership with uh, Environmental Secretary of Sao Paulo. For the first time, the Sao Paulo government introduced the issue of dog population management and dog bite pre prevention as essential for the development, essential tool for the development of further development of cities. We received the invitation to train the government members in these issues. Uh, we and so far. And this is continuing. We have trained more than 44 municipalities and more than 550 government members. 
So these are some of the list of the municipalities that we have trained. Some pictures from those training. Um, so what is our proposal for the municipalities and what we have agreed with them? So um, ag agreement with the Secretariat of Environment, Health and Education to identify areas that are more vulnerable, more vulnerable and that have greater number of dog bites. Um, work with five key messages in the schools of re reason, uh, measure number of bites and reach zero moment within six months, one year. Oh, sorry, measure number of bites uh, for six months to one year and check if there is a decrease in the number of bites. So that's what we are agreed and this is a continuing work. And we can see that the willingness is there from the top level of the government. Um, and we actually received the invitation from the government uh, to, put in the, to put this in place. And in Brazil, we have also developed the first online course of dog population management. So this is uh, at the pilot phase. We have uh, we launched the first edition, first edition of the online course in humane and sustainable dog population <laughs> management in partnership with University of Piranha. Uh, we received more than 800 pre-registrations, and unfortunately, we could only provide the training to 200 students. Um, in, in uh, the courses developed in the Moodle platform. We are launching second edition in May of this year. Um, we intend to make this course much more globally accessible in future in coming days and develop it in English as well. Some of the uh, pictures from the World Reviews Day activities in Brazil. So we do, primarily we, we do extensively at the moment World Reviews Day across Africa region and in Brazil. So in Africa, uh, moving on from Latin America to Africa. So the status of dog population in Africa. Africa has the fast growing population of over one billion people. And where there are people, there are dogs. Um, even the most conservative estimates suggest that there are approximately at least 10 million dogs in Africa, across Africa. Um, due to competing economic and social needs, and this point is true of most of the other countries outside uh, the continent of Africa as well. There is a perceived lack of African government's willingness to prioritize rabies and dog population issues. In Africa, most people are resource constrained. Therefore, dogs rank in the low order of priority. What we know, we know that dogs are sometimes inhumanly killed as a measure to control rabies. Thousands of life continues to be lost to rabies at the same time. Um, productivity potential of communities and countries affected are seriously undermined. Many governments from across the continent are yet to prioritize rabies elimination among existing competing interests, and that needs that uh, needs to change. Uh, quoting uh, what Louis mentioned yesterday, it's not about making rabies priority, but it's about elevating rabies to what uh, other things that government are making a priority. So our approach <coughs> in order to address that has been always <coughs> for effective and sustainable elimination of rabies, a holistic approach is needed, an approach that is aimed at improving the welfare of dogs and creating environment for harmonious coexistence so that the dog-human conflict is reduced. To date, we have worked with partners to further this holistic approach in Zanzibar, southern Tanzania, Kenya, and Sierra Leone. Through our ongoing partnership with Global Alliance for Rabies Control, we are also hoping to have this approach adopted in other countries where we work. Um, Terence presented yesterday on Zimbabwe and Zanzibar. Um, so we want to, through the partnership that we have ongoing with CARC, we want to promote these approaches across the board as well. So the rationale for dog population management. The main concern for Africa is genetic transmission of rabies from dogs to humans and livestock, leading to loss of lives and livelihoods. The usual response sometimes is to call dog populations expensive, that's expensive, that's inhuman, and that's ineffective. The problems return almost immediately, and this has been proven time and again by many bodies, including WHO, OIE, 
and others. Um, mass, vi mass dog vaccination has instead been proven to be the best solution for the elimination of dog-mediated rabies. So we want to change the current paradigm, which is to break the belief that mass culling controls rabies, that accepting that we need to accept that rabies control should be a free public good. It was really um, fascinating and good to hear yesterday from many presenters that the governments were paying for the vaccinations uh, on the PEP front as well. Um, we aim to catalyze long-term behavior change to promote responsible pet ownership. Uh, we want to develop sustainable solutions. So zooming in slightly more into Kenya now, we supported the development of national rabies elimination strategy in 2014 in Kenya. We worked in collaboration with National One Health Unit, Genetic Disease Unit, in operationalizing the strategy nationwide. In order to pilot the work, we, we worked with dogs in Makweni, Baringo, and Mombasa. We worked in collaboration with Makweni County government as a pilot county, and this was a dollar-for-dollar dollar financial partnering approach. Uh, where we put exactly the same amount of money as the government of Makweni County. Um, and the first round mass vaccination trial, we have vaccinated over 89,000 dogs uh, and provided them with basic health care. In addition to this, we also started training teachers, education officers, and livestock extension officers as training of trainers in rabies and dog welfare aimed at students and farmers. Uh, we are working with county governments to create animal welfare bylaws as well, which is beyond just dog population management. We are working with national government on the Animal Welfare Act and national regulations for specifically companion animals. So this is an ongoing work for us. Sierra Leone is a bit uh, newer for us than Kenya. We have established so far a National Animal Welfare Livestock and Rabies Control Task Force this task force constitutes of various, various ministries, um, uh, the non-governmental organizations uh, in the country. We have finalized the Draft Animal Welfare and Livestock Act, um, which is at, currently at Attorney General's office. It allows humane dog population management with jurisdiction. We have uh, launched National Rabies Elimination and Dog Population Management Strategy in 2017. We are currently undertaking capacity building of Freetown City Council, uh, the capital to undertake pilot project in Freetown. Um, we have ownership of this by Ministry of Health and Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security, and we have uh, collaboration with National WHO, FAO offices, uh, Global Alliance for Rabies Control, and other NGOs. Zanzibar. In Zanzibar, we worked from 2005 until 2015 directly. Um, the results following dog population F management efforts in Zanzibar between 2000 and 2014, the center point was responsible dog ownership and dog welfare. That clearly came out from, um, from that. Zanzibar is 99 uh, percent uh, Muslim community, so it was vital to work with imams to to greater understand the context of teaching of dogs, rabies, scripture, and host, uh, historical and animal welfare within the Quran. That approach also we had to take there. Um, there was 65 percent decrease in dog bite incidences, 100 percent decrease in human rabies deaths. Last death was a child registered in November 2013. Um, zero cases of confirmed or suspected rabies in dogs as at December 2013. Um, please note after this there was a surveillance gap. Um, 2016 we had five new cases of uh, rabies partially reported due to improved working surveillance system uh, which GARC is working, Global Alliance for Rabies Control is currently working and Terence did allude to this briefly in his presentation yesterday. So we also have engagement at regional level in the continent. So first, for sustainable impact to be achieved, the competent country authorities need to prioritize rabies elimination and resource the activities appropriately. 
through both a national and regional strategies and plans that sovereign countries have signed up to. In Africa, regional plans ideally achieved through institution uh, mandated to set these up. So we are currently working and lobbying with Africa Union Interbureau for Animal Resources, AU IBAR, and regional economic communities. Um, so we, in 2017, the Animal Welfare, <coughs> Africa Animal Welfare Strategy was launched and the Africa Platform for Animal Welfare was also launched. And we are working again with CARC through the Paracon Network to help reach a wider number of nations. Moving all the way again to Latin America and in Costa Rica. So in the May, we have been working in Costa Rica for last about five years. In May of 2017, the Costa Rican government approved on a new dog protection program that we advised and advocated for based on our dog population management approach. This could potentially save the lives of estimated one million dogs um, and countless number of uh, community members. The project is creating local capacity within seven municipalities um, to implement local level dog population management projects. These seven municipalities from part of the pilot project and will later be rolled out into the entire country. Again, the point here is the government uptake and the uh, willingness of the government to address the issues. In China, um, we are working in China as well, and we have worked in, um, I'm not sure if the, if the term red color project rings any bell in this room, but we ran uh, a red color project for about five years. Um, and China, in China, we ran that project extensively. We worked in three big provinces of China and implemented dog population management. Mainly, red color project was mainly implementing vaccination programs. Um, and we have some of the background information on China um, with 130 million uh, dog population and a growing market for pet dogs for 50 million. Uh, China is becoming one of the most important targets for dog welfare. Um, China has been a crossroad in uh, recent years trying to figure out its position on I will just skip this information slide. Our red color project in China was delivered from 2013 to 15 in three remote areas. China Animal Disease Control Center issued a summary report in 2016 that said the three year pilot experience has proved dog vaccination is the most <laughs> effective approach to prevent rabies. And in China, we are now in dialogue with Beijing uh, Animal Disease Control Center. Beijing Animal Disease Control Center wants to establish cooperation with us and we want, uh, they expect the technical support from us to implement dog population management in Beijing. Just briefly, dog booths, they don't need passport. That's why inter intergovernmental collaboration is essential. Intragovernmental collaboration is essential and multi-sector collaboration at global, regional, and national level, including private sector, is crucial if we genuinely want to eliminate rabies and achieve zero human deaths by 2030. And we work with all, we have worked with all of these bodies and we will continue to do so. So other assets, I won't play this video. This is quite a long video. I just wanted to demonstrate. Um, this is a dog capture and handling training video uh, that World Animal Protection and FAO collaborated to, uh, to develop. This is about 30 minute video um, that is aimed at improving capturing and handling of dogs and uh, various methods of vaccinating the dogs in a proper manner. It's, uh, it's a good uh, video for, for anyone who wants to be in this. Um, so red color campaign that I mentioned earlier, we did extensive ev evaluation, independent evaluation of the red color campaign that ran from 2011 to 2015. And the evaluation has been published in Veterinary Sciences Journal. Uh, the website is there. It's uh, open access. Anyone can access it. Um, please do have a read. It's, uh, there's some very fascinating insights and results and uh, good recommendations. Um, so we are currently working on mobile app to promote responsible ownership in Latin America. Uh, we are planning to launch this towards the end of May. 
uh, and the intention is to pilot in Latin America and then promote it globally if the pilot is successful. So please watch this space. Key points, stray dog control is misleading. We need to understand the whole dog population dynamics and address the root causes, not the symptoms. Uh, culling doesn't work and let's follow the process. Identifying priority problems, initial assessment to expose states and processes of dog population dynamics, design the inter intervention activities that respect animal welfare, monitoring indicators, evaluate data, and adaptively manage. Thank you very much.